A Course in Miracles, Volume 2, Workbook for Students, Lesson 60. These ideas are for today's review. 46. God is the love in which I forgive. 47. God is the strength in which I trust. 48. There is nothing to fear. 49. God's voice speaks to me all through the day. 50. I am sustained by the love of God. 46. God is the love in which I forgive. God does not forgive because he has never condemned. The blameless cannot blame and those who have accepted their innocence see nothing to forgive. Yet forgiveness is the means by which I will recognize my innocence. It is the reflection of God's love on earth. It will bring me near enough to heaven that the love of God can reach down to me and raise me to my home. 47. God is the strength in which I trust. It is not my own strength through which I forgive. It is through the strength of God in me, which I am remembering as I forgive. As I begin to see, I recognize his reflection on earth. I forgive all things because I feel the stirring of his strength in me. And I begin to remember the love I chose to forget, but which has not forgotten me. 48. There is nothing to fear. How safe the world would look to me when I can see it. It will not look anything like what I imagine I see now. Everyone and everything I see will lean toward me to bless me. I will recognize in everyone my dearest friend. What could there be to fear in a world which I have forgiven and which has forgiven me? 49. God's voice speaks to me all through the day. There is not a moment in which God's voice ceases to call on my forgiveness to save me. There is not a moment in which his voice failed to direct my thoughts, guide my actions and lead my feet. I am walking steadily on toward truth. There is nowhere else I can go because God's voice is the only voice and the only guide that has been given to his son. 50. I am sustained by the love of God. As I listen to God's voice, I am sustained by his love. As I open my eyes, his love lights up the world for me to see. As I forgive, his love reminds me that his son is sinless. And as I look upon the world with the vision he has given me, I remember that I am his son. Lesson 46. God is the love in which I forgive. Lesson 47. God is the strength in which I trust. Lesson 48. There is nothing to fear. Lesson 49. God's voice speaks to me all through the day. Lesson 50. I am sustained by the love of God. I want to, as you know, I'm quite, um, I'm quite partial to reading some definitions for you because I want you to see it in the context for which it is being given. And again, a lot of you will know that I'm not one for the pronouns of he, she, it, them, they. It's not like I'm on a um, cancel culture walk. I'm not. It's just that I know that I am not my body identification. I am the spirit within. And the spirit within Jenny, within me, is eternal, changeless, genderless, formless, ageless, has been, always will be, no beginning, no end. That part of me will always be. And so I I know that when it talks about the Son of God, I have to just breathe in and out and accept it for the pronoun for which it is intended. And of course, it was written in the time in, in 66, 67. It was written in the time it took seven years to, to complete 
the scribing of A Course in Miracles, of course, pronouns were a non-issue then. And in religion at the time as well, neither was gender. But I think as we go on into the new era, and when I say new era, it's it, there is, seems to be a shift in people who are no longer accepting the status quo as it is just because it says so. We are looking beyond the body identification. We are looking beyond the physical world. We are looking beyond all of this. Yeah, of course we want to leave an earthly world better off than what we found it for our children and our children's 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 children. But we also want to leave a legacy. We want to leave a legacy of truth where they can know the self within, that, that part within them that is eternal. And so I thought it important today that we just look at what does a course in miracles define as God when they speak about God. The infinite being who created the sons of God created heaven as the dwelling place of his sons, created the Holy Spirit as the communication link with his separated sons, and indeed created reality itself. God has no gender or form, but he does have a will, thoughts and feelings, which are timeless and limitless. Now, that is something to wrap your head around because God has will a will and my will is god's will god's will is my will he has thoughts my thoughts are god's thoughts these thoughts are my thoughts and feelings god has feelings and god has love so if god has feelings then what you're saying is there and there's a range of emotion of feeling but of course in all in miracles also says there is no hate because god cannot hate God does not know hate, but hate is a feeling. So what are the feelings that they are talking about? It says, God is pure love without the slightest hint of anger or attack. So the feelings that he has is on the spectrum of what we would call on the love spectrum, on the compassionate spectrum, on the spectrum of giving, loving, knowing the pureness of who we are. And what I also liked is, and, and again, it just brings it home to everybody, is that God, God has no form and no gender. So when I say no form, you can't see God like this. There's no deity of God that you see like this. There are messengers of God, teachers of God, call it what you want, call, call them what you want. It doesn't matter. But God... God, the source self, has none of that. His love for us is beyond our current comprehension. And I think that's largely due to the fact that we've distorted love in this world and that we don't really know what love is. The Course in Miracles says right in the beginning that this can't teach you about love. We can't teach you about love. We can remove all the obstacles to love. So I look at it and I go, if God is pure love without the slightest hint of anger or attack, how amazing is that? How amazing is that? When somebody's angry with you or attacking you, it doesn't feel good. But you know that it's happening and you're having that experience. Whereas God has none of that. None of that. And that, isn't that the kind of person you want to go visit and have a cup of tea with or coffee? He does communicate with us in the dream of time and space. Now, the dream of time and space is referring to here and now. The time and space of our what our perception of earthly reality is. He hears all our prayers and speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. It says he hears all our prayers. And I remember, and it was a bit confusing, I must be honest, at the time. I remember um doing a workshop on prayer um and one of the things that came up in it was you know 
the mediator, the voice of and for God is the Holy Spirit. So God doesn't really hear. Does God hear our prayers? Because you've got Jesus, our, our brother, our sibling. You've got Jesus and together we form the collective whole. Jesus along with us. And you've got the Holy Spirit that God created when the dream of separation happened. And now it says when you pray, you're praying to the Holy Spirit who... God then is the voice of, of the Holy Spirit is the voice of and for God. And does God hear this prayer? And if my memory serves me correctly, it, the answer was quite perplexing because it was like, no, the prayer is communicated and the Holy Spirit receives it. And I was like, no, it's clear. It says here, God hears all our prayers and speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. So he hears our prayers. This non-form this non-form non-gender this formless genderless being infinite being hears our prayers speaks to us the mode of communication the medium used is the holy spirit so we go okay now we know that god is the infinite being who created the sons of god who created beings Okay, and then it talks about he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. So, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, who was created by God in response to the separation as God's remaining communication link with his separated sons. He is both the voice for God and the voice of God, who guides all of the sleeping sons back to awakening. The Holy Spirit is described throughout the course has given us the answer to the separation and bring in the plan of atonement to us, establishing our particular part in it and showing us exactly what it is. So it talks about third person, capital P of the Trinity. So again, there's, there's lots of words here and I really enjoy the circle of atonements um, edition of the complete and annotated edition of A Course in Miracles because they really give you wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, teaching, the the new edition, the appendix, everything. It's just wonderful. All right. So they talk about, remember we spoke about time and space, the world. The world is the realm of time and space of separated existence. So we here having this dream, apparently, supposedly having this dream, we are awakening. The Holy Spirit has the message to us and for us to awaken. So the world that we live in of time and space, albeit a stubbornly persistent illusion, says Albert Einstein, the physical world seen by our eyes is an illusion that was not created by God. This is in direct conflict with what the Christian Bible says. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and then God created the earth, blah, blah, blah. This says that the realm of time and space of separated existence, the physical world seen by our eyes is an illusion that was not created by God, but the Bible says it was, since only madness makes a world like this. But is the projection of our own collective insanity However, the term often includes both the level of physical forms, which are illusory and made by us, and the minds associated with those forms, which are real and created by God. Seeing the true holiness of those minds is seeing the real world. From this perspective, only the world you see with the physical eyes, a common phrase in the Course, is an illusion made by us. So what it's saying is, the physical world is an illusion made by us, but beyond that true vision, when perception becomes knowledge, that's the real world. When you look beyond, you look into the holiness of your brother. So you can get easily caught in the trap of, hang on, this is so counter the Bible. This is so counter Christianity. This is so counter the biblical Jesus of 2000 years ago. How on earth could Jesus have been the scribe of this when now suddenly it flipped the Bible on its head? And of course, the miracles does quote a lot from the Bible. And so I, I sat and I pondered this and I thought, there's so many trappings we can get caught up in. What ifs, what ifs, what ifs. I actually don't care. 
I actually don't care. If there are contradictions, there are contradictions. I am going to take the message from what I learn and learn to train my mind, to have a trained mind to see with the spiritual eye, to hear with the spiritual ear, to hear the voice of and for God in whatever way, shape or form that takes. In whatever way or form that takes. So I had committed myself to being a devoted, committed, pure Course in Miracles student. And as I went along, I realized that I couldn't just do that because there are these conflicts, there are these ways, and it's not my job to prescribe to you one particular way. There are many, many, many ways to walk. This is a journey I'm taking for 365 days to do all the lessons with you, to integrate it into my life, to integrate it into the way that I bring about healing in the world, to integrate it into the way I create a loving, warm and caring organization, to integrate it into a way where God is the center point, the genderless, formless, ageless, most beautiful of all gods is the center point, that pure love. And for people to experience that pure love. So this is an incredible journey I'm taking for 365 days. And I, I hope that you will stay with me and come out on the other side to a Satori, to an instant awakening. Ah, now I get it. So I really love you and I bless you and I thank you for being here and I hope you're enjoying these. It does stretch the mind. I am not going to apologize for the way I see things because I follow my heart and I follow God within me. So to answer your question that you're thinking, do I believe God created the world? Do I, do I believe we created the world? Do I believe the Big Bang created the world? Number one, the Big Bang could have been created by God. Let's face it, okay? I believe that we are here having this experience and how it came about makes no difference to me. Whether we created it through being separated, thinking that we could usurp and, and overthrow God, whether we did that and created this hellhole for ourselves or whether God created it because he wanted a relationship with us. To me, to be honest with you, makes no difference to me. It makes no difference to me. What makes a difference is my relationship with my source. And I'm hoping that makes the difference to you too. Choose wisely. Choose with your heart and your head. And there are many different teachers, many different organizations. And find the one that resonates with you that you can sit in, fit in, and go with that. So I love you, I bless you, I honor you, I cherish you. And I thank you for being here. And I will see you tomorrow. Take care.